What if I told you that you could simplify the process of adding graphics to your virtual camera for Zoom? Would that be something that you would be interested in? Well, today I am going to teach you all about how you can actually add a slideshow as an overlay to your production, thereby taking out a few of the steps. See, normally when I am creating a presentation, I will go into Keynote or PowerPoint, I'll make my graphics, then I will export those and add them to individual scenes. Well, there's another option. We can cut out the exporting and we can cut out those individual scenes and we can just add a presentation as an overlay. So today that is what we are talking about. How do we add slides as an overlay? So I'll talk about the pros and the cons and who do I actually recommend this for? Because there's some people for whom it'll be great and others maybe not, but you get to decide and I'll show you all the things that you have to consider and how to set this up if this is something you are interested in. Now, if you happen to be new around here, <laughs> I should introduce myself. I didn't have my stream deck set up, full disclosure, now I'm good. All right, my name is Kat and I help people to create more professional and engaging online presentations. And usually that means your stream deck is ready if you are using one, but hey, it's live. And I'm so excited to see some people here who are joining me today for this demonstration. And I'd love to hear from you if you have ever done this before. So whether you're here live, let me know in the chat or in the comments if you're watching the replay, is this something that you have actually tried? Did you like it? What were the drawbacks? Because there are some things you have to consider, but once you get it set up, it is something that has its benefits. So let's actually show you. I'm going to do this presentation using this technique starting now. And you might see that my picture actually does look a little different. And this is one of the things that I am going to address in this. But let's first start with the idea of why. So why would you do this? Why would you wanna add slides as an overlay? Well, there's a few things. One is that this limits the number of scenes you have. And for some people who are new to the idea of a virtual camera, you might be overwhelmed at the idea of switching scenes in a separate streaming software like OBS or Ecamm and managing your Zoom call. Well, in this case, you set up one scene and then you have your slideshow. So you're just controlling the slides and nothing else. It's just coming right into your Zoom. Now, the other thing is you don't have to export every single thing as a separate file, maybe a movie file for an animation or as an image file for something that is static. So that's another thing that you can skip that step. The other thing is you could make more quick edits. So if you did see a mistake, you don't have to go back to the original file and then export again and then reload again. You can just exit your PowerPoint, make the quick change and then put it back into the presentation mode. And you can also trigger your animation. So right now, this slide that I'm using has some animations on it, as you can see, and I am triggering them. Instead of if you have animations and you are exporting them as a graphic, as an animated overlay, you have to set the timing. And so if you are speaking to some points, as I am doing right now, I can choose when I'm going to go to the next slide. Just like when you are doing a real presentation, you get to pick when you are doing those animations. So those are some of the pluses. And I'm just gonna look over here. I see lots of people. Um, my sound is very low. Okay. Oh, that always happens. <laughs> you know, lift the mic a little bit more and see if that's a little bit better. I'm gonna have to keep playing with my sound, but thank you for letting, my, letting me know, Tommy. And uh, yeah, any other things quick before? Okay. And I'm seeing some really nice, nice comments on my channel and I really, I appreciate that from every single person. Okay, next. What are some considerations? So before I actually tell you how to do this, I want you to think about a few things first. So yes, you can save time on exporting and setting up your scenes, absolutely. But you are going to have to focus more on your slides. So you have to make some decisions, which we'll talk about, but you will be probably spending a little bit more time up front, at least at first, when you are starting to do this. So yeah, you'll save time later, but at first you are going to have to focus a little bit more on them and kind of nail down what works for you. Even today, I would probably change a few things about how I've actually set this up right now. 
The other thing, positioning. So because you are just having your slides as an overlay, you have to think, where am I going to position myself during this talk? So you can see that so far I've been using a sidebar and a lower third. And if I have any other things going on on the screen, I wanna make sure I know where I'm standing so I don't have to kind of duck and dodge every time the screen moves. So you wanna think about where is your head going to be while you have this, this slideshow, this presentation. You also have some limitations around which colors you can use because this technique uses a chroma key or green screen. There are other colors as well, not just green. You have to think about what is in your brand. So you might notice if you have watched other videos, I don't usually use purple. Purple is part of my color scheme, but I don't typically use it. I tend to more lean towards that sort of green teal color. Well, <laughs> because I'm using a green background, I can't use that. I could, I could pick another one, but for today's demo, I wanted to use green. So I had to pick a color that did not have green because I don't want that to disappear. And while you would think, oh, I can just set a transparency. So let's say for this sidebar, you know, if I wanted this sidebar right beside me to be semi-transparent, that might be nice, but it doesn't work. Um, you aren't able to do a transparency. Really all it does is fade it, but you won't be able to see anything in the background. So that is a disadvantage. Whereas if you actually have an exported animation or overlay that has that transparent background, you can actually do that. Resolution. So if you are intending to use this for a Zoom virtual camera, which is primarily what I teach on this channel, you have to be mindful that if you are, every, every time you're doing a virtual camera, you want to think about the resolution. And so I really recommend if you are just using the virtual camera that you are using big legible font because you will lose some of that clarity when you are in the Zoom meeting. As always, I recommend that you test your resolution, perhaps turning on the group HD feature in Zoom. Um, also considering using a screen share. And if you do that, there are a few other steps. So you can refer to my other video, which I have in the description below about how to get a better resolution virtual camera. But I want you to think about that. Don't put a bunch of tiny fonts on your slides. Well, don't do that anyway. That's just bad practice. Okay. Um, so let's see what's next. Okay, this is something I wanted to point out because in this case, I always talk about OBS and Ecamm. Now that's personally because I use Ecamm. I love Ecamm, I'm using it right now. And a lot of people, I teach about OBS because it's free and it's accessible and it's a great option for the virtual camera in Zoom. Now, when it comes to this option, this is where OBS actually really does beat out Ecamm for this option. It is just simpler to set up and I'll explain why that is the case. But I say, if this is something you're interested in, probably OBS is the way to go. And in actual fact, the people that I most recommend this for is a person who is new to the virtual camera, who wants to add graphics and feels a little bit overwhelmed by the idea of changing scenes in OBS while they have their Zoom call going on. So by doing this as sort of a beginner, you can set up OBS with one single scene where you have your presentation as an overlay, you set the chroma key, and then you just change your PowerPoint. You don't go back, you don't touch OBS, and you just have that feeding into your Zoom call. So that's the person that I recommend this for the most out of my experience with trying this out. Okay, any, let me know if you have questions in the chat as we do this. And, and now let's go over to the first step. So when it comes to slides, you want to really think about a few things. So where's your head gonna be? <laughs> For me, I decided because I was going to primarily focus on having a sidebar and a lower third, I'm just slightly positioned over, but I'm kind of keeping my head mostly centered. But let's say that you wanted to have a little bit more room for content, you might actually choose to position yourself off to the side. But in that case, test your scenes because it might look a little weird if suddenly there's nothing on the screen and you're kind of way over to the side. The other thing is to choose your layouts. So you will have seen so far that I have a sidebar and sort of a lower third. So those are kind of the two primary ones I'm using. 
But the other thing is that anytime you don't see a graphic, it's actually just a blank slide with a green background. The other thing, which you will see in a moment, is that you can do a full screen. So you can just cover yourself completely with no transparency, no green or whatever color you choose. And then you've got a combination. So you can rotate through those different layouts. You just wanna test again where your head is going to be positioned. Then you wanna add your content and you can keep duplicating those layouts and adding that content. And then if you choose, you can add your animations sort of like I've done here. And there are different animations that you can play around with um, as you're probably aware, with, aware of if you are using any kind of presentation software. And remember, you need to set the background. So you have to decide in advance, what chroma key am I going to use? Am I going to use a green screen? Am I going to use a blue screen? Or like in OBS, you can literally set any color as your chroma key. And so think about your branding, think about your colors and what you wanna use. And then you're going to set the background as a color that does not exist in your presentation. And then you'll remove that anytime that color shows up. Okay, the second step, we've created our slides, we've got our layout, we know where our head's going to be. Now we wanna add our slides to the scene. And so because you are using the chroma key, you are going to be adding this as an overlay and then making sure that you get rid of the background color. So I'm gonna show that, but first I want to talk about the two different ways you can do this. So in option one, you can use one computer. So just one device, you are going to have your PowerPoint presentation open and you are going to bring it into your streaming software. Option two is that you have a secondary device. So right now I'm actually using an iPad to control this. And I'll talk about the different options of which one I prefer. And if you are new to this idea of using a secondary device, you can check out my video. So I have it linked in the description of how do you bring in a second device. And I'm gonna reference NDI, network, <laughs> wait, network device interface, which still means nothing to me. Um, I have a, I just released a video on Saturday showing how you can set up NDI for beginners. If you've never even heard of it and you just hear me talk about it today, you can check out that video and it shows you step-by-step step how you can set up NDI. So option one, just one computer. First, I recommend that you put your presentation, so whether that's PowerPoint or Keynote, play it in a presentation window because you don't want this thing to take over your entire screen cover your streaming software and cover your Zoom, you want to be able to see the slides, but you don't want them to take over. And I have a video on that as well, linked in the description, if you wanna see a bit more about how you actually set that up. So play it in the presentation window. Now you want to, if you are using OBS, you are going to add a window capture to your scene. And then you will select your presentation, whatever you're using, PowerPoint or Keynote, you're gonna add that as an overlay. And if you are using Ecamm and on one computer, you want to use NDI and NDI will bring this in as a camera source. And the reason you have to do that in Ecamm is that the camera source allows you to use the green screen. But if you were to say, do a screen share of your PowerPoint slides, you can't apply the green screen or chroma key in that fashion. So it has to be a camera overlay that goes over your main camera. So it needs to be NDI and you can check out the video on how to do that and how to set that up. And once you've done that, you need to apply the chroma key or the green screen. And I will actually show you a demonstration very soon of how to do that. So that's step one, if you are using one computer. When you are just using one device, as always, if you've ever heard me say this before, I really strongly recommend you test the limits of your computer. Because keep in mind, you are running multiple programs all at one time. So you just wanna make sure that it's all working because you don't want your computer to overheat, have the fan kick on, stress you out. You wanna be able to stay focused when you are doing your presentation. And I see uh, Victor says NDI is interesting. It is interesting. And it's a really helpful tool when you're trying to level up your presentations. Okay, so um, let's see. Let's go to the second option. So option two, this is when you're using more than one device. So in this case, on that second device, this is where you're going to have your slides. 
So right now I'm running a slideshow on my iPad. And if you are using a computer, again, you would have that second device running the slideshow. You can also do this on your phone. And so with OBS, what you're going to do is select a window capture, which is like bringing in a camera because this second device is showing up like a camera, or you can use NDI. And so again, NDI shows up. If you have OBS, you want to make sure you have the NDI plugin so you can add an NDI, um, an NDI source. If you are using Ecamm, you bring in your second device as a camera overlay. Same thing as before, except instead of using NDI, you can connect it. So for example, right now I'm using Ecamm and I have my PowerPoint connected with a cable. So it just shows up automatically as a camera source. Okay. Then you want to apply your green screen or your filter. So those are the two options. So let's actually show you what this looks like. So first I am going to show you my, uh, let's go into Ecamm. And first I'll show you my Ecamm setup, which is what I am doing right now. So if I go into my live demo mode, you can see my screen here and I have, so there's my camera. So I'm on a camera layout right now, not a screen share or anything like that. And I have an overlay. So if you look down here in the left corner, you can see I have a camera overlay and it's my iPad. And if I hover over here to this little pencil, you can see that I have selected Catherine's iPad and my aspect ratio, I use custom because custom I find is the easiest to position on Ecamm. And then I just drag this over the entire screen until it covers everything. And then I go over here to camera effects and you can see here that I have the green screen applied. And now in Ecamm, you can do green or blue. And you wanna make sure that you have transparent as the background because otherwise it's going to give you something like this. <laughs> and that's not what we want. We wanna be able to have transparency and see through it. Now you can also scroll down and play a little bit with the saturation if you want. And this, this actually starts to make my face look a little bit better, but it does start to distort the color that I put together. So be aware of that. Whereas if I go over saturation, saturation kind of lower here, there's a little less green, but then it's taking, it's getting rid of the color on my face. So you can play around with the saturation a little bit if you are using Ecamm. All right, so let's go out of live demo mode and now let's go into OBS. So with OBS right now, I just have a single scene set up that is showing my camera source only and I'm going to add my source. So let's go add here. I'm, I'm, because I'm using my iPad right now, I'm going to add a video capture device and it's my iPad. And so I'm going to select iPad and click OK. Now here you can see it seems to be a lot smaller for whatever reason. So I can actually crop that. So if you have a Mac, you want to hold down your option. If you have a Windows, hold down Alt. This is where we can crop the sides of these. So we're just going to do that on all four sides. And then let's position this. So I'm going to drag it across the entire thing. And then I right click. I'm going to choose filters. We go under effect filters, chroma key. I'll call it chroma key. And then we have green is automatically selected. But as you are aware with OBS or maybe you're not, you can choose green, blue, magenta, or custom where you can enter your own custom color. And now that we have done that, we have created our scene. And so if I were to change these slides, I can go backwards. You can see that I have set this all up. So that's how you do that if you've got it separate. If you have it on the same device, so let me actually start. I have a copy on my computer open. I'm going to play this in a window. So now I have it playing in a window. So let's actually do, I'm going to hide the iPad for now. So now it's just my camera showing and I'm going to add a window capture. So this would be if I'm on the same device. 
So let's call this window capture PowerPoint or PPT. And I am going to select from the list. It shows everything here and I've got PowerPoint slideshow. Now, if you have seen the other video about starting this in a window, you'll know that the taskbar shows up. That's one of the disadvantages or the tool bar at the top, but we can crop that because it's OBS. So hold down either option or alt, just crop out that little part. And then we want to drag this, cover the whole window, right click, filter, add your chroma key, and then we say close and there we have it. So now this is on my computer, so I can just go over to PowerPoint and then I can use my PowerPoint to just advance these slides and you're seeing I can trigger these animations. So this is using the same computer. So that is how you do this in OBS. So I'd like to look down, see, are there any questions at all about this? Do you think you're going to give this a try? Because this is the type of thing that really can help you when it comes to simplifying, not having to worry about changing scenes in your presentation in the middle. And again, you can quickly add and edit things. Um, so I would love to know if this is something that you are interested in <laughs> and what are some of the pros and cons. Now, obviously you saw that there was a little bit of a change in how my picture looked. So there was that slight tint to it. And I do believe that if I spent a little bit more time getting the exact green color that might have helped a little bit more because there is that um, like true green that you can get rid of. So that might help. I could spend a little bit more time on that. But I think that this is a good option for those who are looking for a way to add graphics to OBS or Ecamm, bring it into their Zoom call and just not have to worry about a production. At the same time, I want you to think like a producer. So how would you have the next slide? How would you progress to the next slide and really think about making it interesting, having it change up, using a combination of things like the sidebar and the lower third or a full slide and really mix those things up. And hopefully this could be something that can make your next presentation look a little bit more professional and a little bit more engaging.